every man will always feel that he's got to support the family. You're brought up where your father goes out and works and your mother's home doing a housework or something, and uh, he has to take care of uh, bringing home the money to pay the bills, pay the rent, and bring, put the food on the table. But uh, I feel it's much different now. We're sharing the responsibility. I drive for a limousine company, uh, Fugazi Continental. It's uh, very good. It's flexible hours where I don't have to worry about if, uh, you know, when I'm working, I can work any time I want. And every morning I try to get in by about 4, 4.30 in the morning or so. There's certain days that I come home and I watch and, uh, during the afternoon. And then at night, I usually fix supper. And then uh, I go back to work. Why, I'm so pretty. Yep. We woke up late again today. Yeah. Well, now we've got to get to bed earlier, Shannon. No, not today. Tomorrow. Well, There's no school. Right? All right. Yeah, to tomorrow. I consider myself a feminist. And by that I mean a woman that's going to support other women. And a woman that's going to... That's just going to be yourself and not going to have to do a lot of things that people want her to do. What got me thinking about the women's movement was when I thought about my life and I wasn't happy staying home. I saw the women's movement and women um, fighting for their rights. And when I heard that you didn't have to act, in quotes, feminine all the time or passive, and when I started acting a little bit assertive and more confident, I felt a lot happier. Huh? Yeah. We're going to arrest me and you? Wait for Daddy? Yeah. My sister and I are pretty close to our mother. The three of us get together a lot and talk about the women's movement and share experiences. After I worked a while, I found I wasn't so dependent on Daddy like I had been. I mean, for years, all it was was, you know, him and I and the kids, and him making, you know, the money and me staying home with the kids and bringing up the kids. And then it became, uh, when I started working, I became uh, a breadwinner and I could make my own money. Now I had money of my own to spend. I could buy what I wanted. For a while I thought, you know, this was wrong. You know, I couldn't go to work and leave the kids it was there. That was, you know, that wasn't what a mother did. But I had to be uh, a me first, you know, in order to uh, get it all together. I had, you know, I found out, hey, I could say, uh, I'm going out tonight or I'm going out tomorrow and not feel guilty about it for a while, you know, and, uh, for why you did? Oh, feel guilty for years, about for, for sure, for years. Every time I went out, I would feel, oh, I'm leaving the kid. I never had uh, uh, a point in my life where I felt, and that, until, you know, the woman's movement, really, until I uh, felt, take care of your needs, take care of them. Because if you don't, uh, life is going to be kind of dead. You're getting your chance now and do it. I mean, you're not going to wait until I'm 90 and, and then say, look, I, you know, all my life I wanted to do this. Now it's too late. And uh, I don't think the price was too high to pay. There was a lot of, like I said, conflict and arguing and that. And there still is some, but uh, I get uh, to the point where I say, this is how it should be in my mind, and that's how I'd like it. Yeah, you were saying about uh, that why wait till 90, you know, and, uh, you know, that whole thing, do it now. And that, that, to me, that's been, like, one of the hardest things. Like, once I found out that I had all these rights and I had all these uh, capabilities of doing stuff, I wanted it done right away. And, like, it seemed like all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here I was in the house saying, okay, now we're changing, I'm equal, you know, I have to pay, and, uh, okay, I'm working. And all of a sudden, it was like, she was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, what, what is going to happen to us? And uh, at the beginning was probably the hardest part, saying, you know, me wanting to share, wanting equality, and Jimmy wanting to share it. But, you know, now that there, there were some, you know, uh, prices that I had to pay and advantages that Jimmy, you know, has now, like, I'll say, oh, that thing has to be a... Uh, hangs on the wall. Is it right? It does. I said, well, you know, 
when are you going to do it? Why do I have to do it? And I said, well, the same reason I have to do this. But you don't have to do it. You always say you don't have to no, do it. That's what a fact is. <laughs> <laughs> and like, all of a sudden, do it. That's it. I bring it home. He's always getting it. I bring it home. On Sunday, everybody has dinner at my parents' house. My father has traditional ideas about women and families and likes to tease us about being liberated. That's how we always taste when my mother made it. <laughs> 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 right. uh, did, did you keep the words for that uh, music? I have the whole thing. Oh. Okay, uh, you want to say we had we Shirley Susan, we had oh, Bella right, Abzuk, and... Uh, that, was, so that was the one we didn't let you go to. Wasn't it? Nice he didn't go to that. We, we wouldn't let him go. Nice They're quiet, doing a recent family. Make make his wife will take care of their oh. children and stay at home. We didn't have none of that. You had the loud mouth communist driving. I'm sure you know. Oh, no. Oh, no. You had all the women that used to cater to their husbands. You know, the old people. Who the hell? Who are the cater? Is that you? Way of life. No, they smartened huh? up. They smartened up, right. Remember, God wanted them off equal. They would have made all men. Oh, but we need more in this house is women's power. With liberation, there are responsibilities. I want to be independent, to take care of myself. To me, that means half of the financial responsibilities in our marriage are mine. I don't want Jimmy to have to take some job he doesn't like just to support me. But the question I'm raising is, can I be a good mother and also work? I think in order to be a good mother, you have to have your own life. I couldn't possibly make Shannon happy if I wasn't happy. And in order to be fulfilled, right now I have to work. Okay, our committee, um, our committee is from Jan's office and we're trying, we're a committee forms to eliminate sexism in the schools. I think uh, I'm a better mother now because I have my own life and my own needs and I'm acting on my own desires. Through uh, being my own person, I've shown Shannon a lot of things that she wouldn't have been able to see. Okay, we didn't have her name. Can I have her name? I'm a community organizer for an act, Ethnic Neighborhood Action Center. My job is to help organize neighborhood people around issues that affect their lives. You know, on the other hand, we're also trying to really build a very strong committee that's going to work toward the elimination of sexism in schools. It just happens to be that the slate is all women, so there's, there's a hook in. You know, and that one of the things that slate will say is that women have, there is no women right now on the local school board. There was only one woman in the last, what, 10 years that's been on the local yeah. school board? And that's outrageous, and it's sex discrimination. I think me working has really helped me define who I am, because I've seen who I am by how I react to different issues that come up. As a community organizer, you have to have ideas and opinions on a lot of different subjects. It's also dealing with all the issues that are going to be our right. issues as candidates. Yeah. And if yeah. we have these issues as candidates, and we have people on this committee that aren't you know, they don't really care about sexism or racism in the school. How beneficial are they going to be? They're going to have their own agenda for, um, the, for the reasons why they want to go to our meetings and our stuff. And it could be really... I think mostly it's an educational process that I'm learning, but I'm trying to teach the people in the community. Sometimes, like, it's really hard because I'm a woman to be a community organizer because at meetings, if I say anything, it's not as important as if a man says it. And I have to be twice as assertive and twice as knowledgeable on a subject to have any kind of say in a certain area. But you could call, you know, there. If right. he get a little rough, you know, like if he says, I mean, he don't want to be bothered, just tell him that you have to meet with him. Because he, sometimes he can turn you off. Do you know him? Yeah, I know him. So the, the, you are, yeah. Hey, did you have a nice day in school? Yeah. Hmm? Have any tests or anything? No. No? Oh, you have a good day, huh? Mm -hmm. That's nice. Okay, listen now. I want you to go upstairs and change, you know, and then I want you to come down and do your homework. Okay? Bye-bye. Okay? Go ahead. Since Linda's gotten into the women's movement, I say past year or so, we've been getting closer and closer. Our marriage and our life together has grown much more because she's become more and more 
independent, more and more stable in her feelings and everything. And she's learned a heck of a lot more, and I've learned. She's actually probing into me and learning more about me. And with that, I'm actually finding more about myself and more about her. I've learned more from her being in, in the woman's movement, I think, than she has. The changes that have been made are all been beneficial to myself. Her homework and things like that, I learned more and more about my daughter. Look at Shannon now. Shannon. It's the same thing. Things that I have to do around the house, well, there ain't nothing wrong with that. You can learn that uh, it isn't being a sissy having to do housework or anything. It's just being a person, you know. I did you know that was seven? Plus three. That one's easy, huh? This one here, you have to count. Yeah. All right. Four plus three. How many? No, look at four plus three. One, two, three, four. Listen to me. Four plus three. Three. Okay. When Linda first started going to the meetings and everything, I felt it was a little, I guess, you know, every husband, because it was all new to me. You know, I didn't know what was going on and everything. I thought, oh, God, here she goes. She's going to come home and she's going to be a Hitler or something else. But uh, it didn't take long to find out actually what it was about. I feel closer to my wife than I have in a long time. I mean, there's still, you know, no marriage is perfect. I mean, don't get me wrong, but, you know, there's hang-ups here and there. There's always arguments. I mean, you know. I really adore her, love her. I mean, I put her above my feelings for anyone else because that's how I feel about her. I feel much closer to her and much more at ease, and I like to be around her more than I like to be around anybody else. Hi, Jen. Hi, Mark. Oh, I missed you. Hi, Jen. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Mark. Did you want some? I forgot what you no. said. No onion. Shelly, you leave that. Mommy will cut that or daddy will cut it. I was asked to be on the committee and I said I'm learning all this stuff. So you have to... Bear with you? Yeah, that, you know, there's going to be questions that might seem basic. I said, but I have to ask them. Yeah. After the meeting, he, he complimented that I said that. That, you know, most people don't do that. Yeah, there was a time that I needed him for just very unhealthy reasons. I needed him because I was married and I was supposed to have a husband and because I had a, a child and they needed a father and because I needed money. And that, and that lasted for, I married seven years for about six years or six and a half years. She's not going to eat either one of the vegetables. Why? She likes broccoli. No, I don't. No, she don't. Just in the last few months, or six months or a year, or whatever, it's changed that I, I need him now just, just for support because I like the type of person that he is sometimes. And because I saw that there was, that I, I didn't need him. I didn't, I could work myself. And it wasn't so much of a dependency. See the dog? No. Take him out? Yeah. Mm -mm. Here, do you want everything? How'd you feel being tucked in? I was crying in school. You were crying? What? Why? Because I couldn't go home. Ah, uh, how long did you think they were going to keep you? Dopey Eileen comes in here and says they're going to keep her three or four hours. <laughs> they never keep us in school. I know. We never push either. Liberation has a lot of pains and a lot of costs, and there's a lot of rewards and a lot of goodies you get with that, too. Sometimes that I think, is it worth it? Is it really worth it? I think, oh, I remember when I never thought of any of these things. I try to tell myself, yeah, you were happy then. 
And all of a sudden, once they say, all right, you know, Linda, you can go back. You don't have to work, and all you can do is stay home and, you know, do what everybody else does. All of a sudden, this feeling of an entrapment, almost like a change that, uh, I don't think I could ever go back. The dishes. What are you doing? Nothing at all? You want to put up your bath? 